why are they letting it happen? Why do you think the government is allowing the border to be so porous? And why are they resisting when Texas tries to do something about it? Well, I I always worry when we're trying to understand what's happening and and the, the information is not being shared with us. You have to ask yourself the question of how many things, how many separate things are in play, right? Before I went to to Panama, I thought there was a migration of people. Now I think there are there are two. One of them's clearly a migration and the other one could well be an invasion. So if I know that there are two things, then I can put them in two categories and I can ask myself the question, why is this being allowed and why is that being allowed? The consensus, eh, maybe consensus is too strong, but the belief amongst many who have been on the story of the migration for years now is that this is a ploy to create voters, democratic voters. And I don't think that's impossible. I think that's probably playing a role. I don't know how realistic it is. I don't know whether or not it is clear that uh, migrants necessarily carry the uh, the likelihood of voting blue that the blue team imagines. But anyway, I think that that's a plausible explanation in part, but I don't think it it really covers it. There are other hypotheses that are darker. There is talk about the possibility of trading citizenship for military service. I think that's a very frightening prospect, but it I didn't invent the idea. It has been discussed. And the problem is that to the extent that we saw things like the vaccine mandate drive out the skeptics from the military, this process would also bring in a lot of people into military service who would have more reason to follow immoral orders than uh, a citizen soldier who had been American their whole life. In other words, if the, uh, if the power structure is granting you citizenship, which you want, in exchange for your obedience, then what is it that would cause you to say no? So if you wanted a force that was capable of um, acting on behalf of tyranny against Americans, then a force that doesn't have a deep history with the rights of being an American, that doesn't have a long-standing allegiance to people within the country, that force would be uh, potentially more compliant. And that worries me. That should deal. worry you. I, I didn't, you really didn't consider that until you just said that. Pretty simple trade-off. How about service for citizenship? The military says they want legal immigrants to address recruiting shortfalls. 14 just graduated Air Force basic training in April. Another 2,900 have enlisted in the Army. Her bill, and I hope I describe it accurately, says that if you're an undocumented person in this country and you can pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like, you can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. This ruled illegal immigrants have the right to keep and bear arms. So rather than the circle with the line through it, we need like a thumbs up emoji there. The case is pretty simple. Police arrested an illegal immigrant living in Chicago with a gun back in 2020. They charged him for violating the federal law banning illegal immigrants from having guns. It's been on the books for a long time. Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman just decided the Second Amendment applies to him, the illegal immigrant, like everybody else. So he can have a gun. In her decision, she wrote that Humberto Flores received and used the handgun solely for self-protection and protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest in the spring of 2020. The United States is in a state of undeclared war. The United Nations and associated organizations are actively working to dissolve the American Republic through an industrial-scale weaponized migration program. Narco-terrorist cartel organizations control the entire U.S. southern border. And every day, thousands of unknown military-aged men from around the world infiltrate America. At this point, there are undoubtedly terrorists, saboteurs, spies, and other nefarious actors embedded in America. 
with many more on the way. There is also an ever-increasing threat of the establishment of a permanent one-party state. As you have just seen, the majority of these illegals support the Biden regime. The harsh reality of this invasion can no longer be ignored, and its effects will only grow worse over the years to come. Schools, which once served to educate the next generation of Americans, now serve as illegal alien shelters. Every night, thousands of veterans sleep homeless in the streets, while illegal aliens, who have contributed nothing to America, sleep in hotel rooms for free. Major American cities are watering down the votes of law-abiding, tax-paying citizens by granting suffrage to illegal aliens. This new voter base has already shown blatant disrespect for the laws of the United States by entering the country illegally. In some states, illegals will begin policing American citizens, and some members of Congress have openly suggested the idea of having illegals serve in the military in exchange for citizenship. This is replacement migration. The United Nations wrote a white paper about this phenomenon in 2000, titled Replacement Migration. Is it a solution to declining and aging populations? The paper proposes mass migration as a means to offset aging populations in Europe, the United States, Russia, Japan, and Korea. The white paper offers five possible scenarios for the United States. Shockingly, Scenario 5 suggests it would be necessary to have 593 million immigrants from 1995 to 2050, an average of 10.8 million per year. By 2050, out of a United States total population of 1.1 billion, 775 million, or 73%, would be post-1995 immigrants or their descendants. The American Republic is on the verge of extinction. If you are an American, the onus is on you to stand up, speak out, and fight back against this agenda.